in this video, I'm going to be talking about everything that we know about the Patronus and my theory as to the origin of it. Today on Beard vs. Beard. Hey everybody, I am Taylor with Beard vs. Beard, where I show you it's okay to be a man and a geek at the same time. Today we're talking about Patronuses. That's right, the Patronus charm is used to fend off Dementors. It is extremely hard to make a corporeal Patronus, but slightly easier to make a non-corporeal Patronus. The non-corporeal Patronus can fend off one or two Dementors, whereas the corporeal Patronus, that actually takes the shape of an animal, can fend off up to hundreds of Dementors, depending on the strength of the Patronus. Now, the Patronus does come from within the person. According to the great wizard Spangle, who wrote the book Charms of Defense and Deterrence, he said, quote, For it is evident that a human confronted with inhuman evil, such as a Dementor, must draw upon resources he or she may never have needed. And the Patronus is the awakened secret self that lies dormant until needed, but which must now be brought to light. Being first introduced in the Prisoner of Azkaban, we know that the Patronus has to have a talisman memory. That is, it has to have at least one memory that is extremely powerful, that is just so filled with happiness and joy that it can literally emanate out of you in order to defeat Dementors, which can literally suck the soul right out of you. Plus, they can make you feel like you will never feel happy again. Now each corporeal Patronus that someone issues is going to be unique to that wizard. Even if two different wizards conjure, let's say, a horse Patronus, those two horses are going to be different. They are going to be as different as the two wizards who cast them. And there's no real way to discern what your Patronus is going to be. That's right, after all those years thinking, hmm, I bet my Patronus is going to be this. That's right, you're wrong. From Spangle, quote, It is my firm belief that such a Patronus is an indicator of obsession or eccentricity. Here is a wizard who may not be able to hide their essential self in common life, who may indeed parade tendencies that others might prefer to conceal. Whatever the form of their Patronus, you would be well advised to show respect and occasionally caution towards a witch or wizard who produces a Patronus of their choice. So where does a Patronus actually come from? Well, we know it comes from the self. But as far as the ancientness of it, where does that part come from? When was it discovered? Who knew about this? Well, this is where it comes to my theory. Now, part of this is going to come from Pottermore, and part of it is going to come from outside sources, and another part of it is going to come from my personal experience. So just hang with me here. There will be resources down below where you can check this stuff out. Now, we do know from Pottermore that wizards developed all around the world, including North America. And in ancient times, who lived in North America? The Native Americans! Go figure! And according to Pottermore, those wizards that were Native American were great at dealing with plants and with animals. Now, this is where we have to stem into real-world beliefs, which Harry Potter often does. Several Native American tribes, but not all, believe in a spirit guide, in an animal that represents you and that is your totem. Now, in order to find out your spirit guide, you do need to go through a couple of different rituals in order to contact them and to get to know them better. These rituals are very sacred, so you're not going to find a lot of information about them on the web. However, here is a legitimate source in the, in the description down below where you can find some general information about this topic. Now, I do warn you that the idea of spirit guides has been co-opted by the New Age movement that came about in the 60s and 70s. So there's a lot of BS out there about it, just to give you a fair warning. Now, personally, I do know who my spirit guide is. I do know that because I went through the ceremonies. I lived with uh, several Native American tribes, and one of them was really nice to me. They took me in, they treated me like their own family, and they helped me through this process. Now, I am not going to tell you what it is because that would offend my spirit guide. Now, the spirit guide. There are several types of spirit guides, and there are several things that it can do. 
One, it does come from within you, and it does represent you. A spirit guide can give you guidance and help along your path. A spirit guide can help you in making decisions about which path in life to go down. Then a spirit guide can come to you and give you a message that can relay information in order to help you out. Does any of this sound familiar? Well, good, because it should. That is right, the spirit guide of Native American belief is a lot like a Patronus. Both come from within you, both can represent you, both can change during your lifetime. That's right, Nymphadora taunts Patronus changed from being a hare to being a wolf when she was in love with John Lupin and he didn't really reciprocate. And Severus Snape commented on this and said he preferred the old one, which means he kind of knew what was going on. <laughs> we know that a Patronus can send messages like, just like a spirit guide can send you messages as well. Therefore, I conclude that the Patronus actually comes from North America and from Native American wizards. When they were experimenting with this, they were able to contact other wizards and witches around the globe because we knew they had contact with each other, according to Pottermore, and was able to share this practice of finding your spirit guide, and this developed into the modern-day Patronus, that protector and that representer of you that can fend off evil and that can help you along your path to life. Let me know what you think about this theory, whether you disagree or if you agree. Let me know in the comment section down below. Did Patronuses come from Native American Indians way back in the day? And how do you think that relates to the actual idea of having a spirit guide in Native American belief? Now I know you're asking yourselves one big question. How do I see more videos? Well, you can click subscribe right here. I put out videos like this every week where I show you it's okay to be a guy and a geek at the same time. In fact, you can click this video, which is my theory about Hagrid and how he should actually have a criminal record and be sent to Azkaban. Or you can click this video right here, which is how to properly shave like a man. Remember, if the women don't find you manly, they should at least find you geeky. Don't go shaving on me.